Five years ago, a man's fantasy became reality in a form never seen before, a giant cooking arena, a kitchen stadium. The motivation for spending his fortune to create Kitchen Stadium was to encounter new original cuisines, which could be called true artistic creations. Out of to realize his dream, he first secretly started selecting the top chefs of various styles of cooking. And he named his men the Iron Chefs, the invincible men of culinary skills. Iron Chef Japanese is Masaharu Morimoto. Iron Chef French is Hiroyuki Sakai. Iron Chef Chinese is Chen Kenichi. And Masahiko Kobe is Iron Chef Italian. The Kitchen Stadium is the arena where Iron Chefs await the challenges of master chefs from around the world. Both the Iron Chef and Challenger have one hour to tackle the theme ingredient of the day, using all their senses, skills, creativity, there to prepare artistic dishes never tasted before. And if ever a challenger wins over the Iron Chef, he or she will gain the people's ovation and fame forever. Kitchen Stadium is the arena where you will meet the master chefs from around the world and their artistic creations. What inspiration will today's challenger bring? And how will the Iron Chef fight back? The heat will be on! If memory serves me right, this kitchen stadium has seen many unforgettable battles. And now, a new legend is about to be born. Today's challenger will be the 300th chef to step into my stadium. For this memorable day, we must have a chef of suitable caliber, it seemed to me. And so, I turn to the most famous Parisian restaurant, La Tour d'Argent. Since its founding in 1582, it has served royalty and entertained state guests. Without doubt, the temple of Epicureanism. The guardian of top French cuisine for over 400 years, La Tour d'Argent. Their specialty duck recipe, sampled by the Emperor Showa, speaks of their glory. A man who was promoted to sous chef by this restaurant when he was only 26 years old is now in Japan. He is the head chef of the one and only branch outside France, La Tour d'Argent Tokyo. There is a history to the cuisine. The recipes of Tour d'Argent which is automatically the history of French cuisine. French cuisine backed by a history of over 400 years. I want to celebrate this memorable match with this in mind. Today's challenger, our 300th challenger, from Hotel du Otani's La Tour d'Argent Tokyo, head chef Dominique Corby. Dominique Corby entered the field of cooking at age 17. Through many years of apprenticeship, he acquired and developed his originality. And at a mere 26 years of age, he became sous chef at one of the top restaurants in the world. Three years later, fully endorsed by the owner, he climbed to head chef of La Tour d'Argent Tokyo, the restaurant's only branch. This young genius attracts gourmets in Japan with his dishes that speak of the tradition and class of the head restaurant. Corby's dishes are the works of a master of true French cuisine, reflecting the restaurant's 400-year history. They are what other chefs strive to recreate. So now, Corby, as the 300th challenger, don't hold back. Show us all your skills and senses. I have all the confidence of winning. And I'd like to show you one of my latest recipes as well.
このキッチンスタジアムが誕生してからこれまでここを訪れた挑戦者の数は299人そして今日ついに300人目の挑戦者がなんとあの世界で最も有名なレストランからやってまいりましたさあ皆さん大きな拍手でお迎えください清井町ホテルニューオータニラトゥール・ダルジャン東京総料理長ドミニク・コールイン Another milestone for the Kaga Gourmet Academy is challenger number 300 strides into the kitchen, Dominique Corby. From one of the most prominent French restaurants in the world with a history of more than 400 years, La Tour d'Argent's written the book on fine French cuisine. No understatement, this will be one of the most incredible battles we've ever seen. Thank you very much. This is a present from my restaurant. This has been kept to be served in the year 2000, and you are the first one to receive this. You're welcome. Ascending into the ethereal atmosphere of Kitchen Stadium, your Iron Chefs. Iron Chef Chinese Chen Kenichi, Iron Chef French Hiroyuki Sakai, and Iron Chef Japanese Masaharu Morimoto, the country's culinary leaders. One of them will take on challenger number 300. Chen san, if I may. It's Chen, the chef from the oldest restaurant in Paris, opts for the Dean of Iron Chefs, Corby choosing Iron Chef Chinese Chen Kenichi. The son of the god of Szechuan cooking, Chen has further enhanced the family's glory through his own outstanding career. Today, the Szechuan sage takes on a French chef backed by a tradition of more than 400 years. And it looks like he's already starting to feel the pressure. トゥールダルジャンのスペシャルテでもよく使われるフレンチには欠かせないあの食材を用意してみました特に今回は300人目の挑戦者ということでかなり上質なものを取り寄せましたそれでは発表します今日のテーマはこれです今日のテーマはワグラ300, the number of challengers we've had in Kitchen Stadium with today's challenger Corby from the restaurant that represents the history of French cuisine, set to duke it out with Iron Chef Chinese Chen. But foie gras the theme. Where does that fit in Chinese cuisine? No wonder Chen looks down in the dumps. He's the underdog today. All right, Bang the opening gong, we are on. As the men make their way quickly upstairs to the foie gras, the other Iron Chefs are here watching this one. And any of the other three for sure would have been able to handle foie gras better than Chen, who looks still like he's in a daze and dock. Yeah. To begin with, a couple of types of foie gras up there. Right, you are. The darker one uh, from France is the liver of a duck, or as they say, foie gras de canard. And the whitish or pinkish one is the liver of the goose. That's from Hungary. Okay, duck and goose foie gras. Yeah, exactly. Now, originally the goose foie gras was more common, but nowadays actually on the market, 70% is uh, duck. Okay, and for this battle, we have some special guests today. First, his first time here, newscaster Norio Fukutome. Hello. And actress Yuko Sano. It's nice, nice to, be, to here. be here. And our commentator, of course, Dr. Yukio Hattori. Always a pleasure. Welcome all. And first, Fukutome san, gotta thank you for being my mentor in the business. Hey, don't say that. You know a lot more <laughs> about cooking than me. No, 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 no. You've no. even had your own cookbook come out last year. <laughs> And in it, you uh, say you always do a lot of cooking at home. You're the man in the kitchen. Yeah, I've tried many foods from around the world, but at this age, I'm back to my origin, Japanese food. But I still love French food and Italian food. It's great stuff. Well, tell us, did you make your own lunch today before coming in? Well, as long as I'm at home, I cook for myself. Comfortable in the kitchen? Oh, huh? yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like to cook. Gonna be critiquing my comments all day today? Hey, cut it out. <laughs> And Asano-san, yeah. here for another milestone. Yep, I'm happy to be here. You ever been to the La Tour d'Argent in either France or here? Well, I haven't had a chance to go to the one in Paris, mm -hmm. but I go to their new Atani branch. How about foie gras? Oh, I love it. Fresh foie gras. It's so great. Fresh? You mean raw? No, 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 not raw. Cooked, of course. Just lightly pan-fried, like mm -hmm. that. Okay, well, glad you could be with us today. 
Yep, it's my pleasure to be here. Now, let's see, this is on the Challenger side here. Yeah, he's wrapping it in salt-cured grape leaves, I believe, and then placing that into a duck. No, All right. son. I heard it's really difficult to remove the veins. Actually, I'm glad you brought that up. Now, the one he used here, he actually didn't do that. But for a uh, terrine or other dishes like that, he'll probably remove the veins and blood vessels, yeah. Mm. All right, right, Challenger Corby, from the floor, go ahead, Ota. Yeah, I asked Iron Chef Chen for his thoughts on today's steaming ingredient, and he said, ha, what am I supposed to do with foie gras? Can I get a pinch hitter in here? He's in a state of panic. Well, is there <laughs> any dish in Chinese cuisine which uses foie gras? Oh, you got to be kidding. No. no. All right, just asking. <laughs> so Chen's already in a quandary. But then again, the bottom line is, this is just liver, right? Okay, mm. fukutome san you know a lot about foie gras. What do you think Chen might do today? Well, yeah, goose, uh, goose foie gras has been used more commonly in the past. I hear Chen san says it's really foreign to him, but it's really important to note that goose was first introduced to Europe from China, and there are hundreds of uh, great dishes in Chinese cuisine. So there's his possible opening for today. Oh yeah, I know Chin San will do good by using foie gras in those recipes. Hope so. And now the challenger here browning the skin of the duck over there. Oh, you're right. Not using a frying pan, more like a roasting pan, I guess, because of the size and a lot of smoke coming off that one. Wow, it's On quite bold. high heat. Careful over there, that one's hot. This is probably to char the surface before putting it into the oven. All mm. right, mm. he's got that out of the way there. And now let's check in on Chen's side. Fukuisan? Yes. Yeah, taking a look at this container that he's lined with aluminum foil, you'll see long onions, ginger, salt, pickled red chili, and sliced foie foie gras, uh, which I believe is French for goose foie gras. Pardon my French. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and how will he cook this one? Hmm. Well, okay, well, there it is, into oh. the steamer. Okay, okay. Isn't that somewhat That's unusual, though, so Doc, unique. to be steaming foie gras? Yeah, you're right. It's not a popular way of cooking it. Usually pan-fried or sautéed mm -hmm. is, is the best. Yeah. All right, now we're back on Challenger Corby's side. Looks like black pepper is okay, there. Okay, and mm. a Powdery spice yeah, it just rolled in. Else. Uh -huh. What is that? Hmm, could be curry? Curry powder? Be, yeah, 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 curry powder. Okay, that could be. And what's the Iron Chef doing? What? Flour? Oh, right, yeah, okay, when you saute them, you usually cover it with flour. Yes. yes. Right, right. So I assume he's sauteing one piece of this. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, if you're talking about the spice that looks like curry powder here on the uh, on the challenger side, it's actually a mix of cardamom and turmeric. That's what he's using. Oh, okay. Ah. Not quite curry cardamom powder, and uh, turmeric. Uh huh. Okay. okay. And both those spices are normally used in a curry powder mix. Okay, close enough. So it'll taste like curry, sort of. I believe it's probably for the aroma mostly. Hmm. Ah, more more than the flavor. Okay. Wow, what a block. Go! After hearing Fukutome san's uh, comments about the Chinese goose, I asked the Iron Chef about that and he said, Yes, I know, I've heard that there used to be a Chinese ingredient similar to foie gras in the old days, but they weren't this big and they were a lot less fatty in the past. Okay, uh -huh. so uh, basically okay. an uncharted territory here for mm -hmm. the Iron huh. Chef. No actual hands-on experience with the theme and, and his Fukuzan? cuisine. Yes. Yeah, as you know, the challenger was just using cardamom in one of his dishes, and he said he chose that spice because he likes the aroma so much, and besides, it matches very well with foie gras. All right, yeah. thanks. Mm. The aroma factor, as Doc correctly noted, and that one's already in the oven there. Okay, the challenger, Dominique and Corby, Fukuzan? still youthful. Go. Yeah, one more thing. Challenger Corby, commenting on why he chose Chen, explained that he's from Tour d'Argent, uh, where tradition and class matter, and so he said, I wanted to challenge Chen San because he He's been an Iron Chef the longest. Okay, so really? he went for the Dean of Iron <laughs> Chefs, Chen Kenichi. He's been battling here in Kitchen Stadium since October of 1993. His overall record, 62 wins, 16 losses, and one tie. Hey, that's a winning percentage of just <laughs> under 80%. Wow. And up in the Royal Box, the other Iron Chefs are here looking on, a rather rare occurrence to get them all together. And all the way to the right there is the man who was the 100th challenger here, Toshiro Kandagawa. Today's challenger, Dominique Corby, is our 300th challenger in Kitchen Stadium. And also back upstairs on the challenger side, that is Chef Taraki Shimizu from La Tuelle in Kagurazaka. He once worked at Tour d'Arjan as the first Japanese head chef in the restaurant's history. Wow, look at this. Oh, I can't look wait to eat color that. Of that. Yeah. Looking Ooh. great. And hey, what peaches. did he just throw peaches. in? Peaches in that. Peaches oh. in there. Is wow. that for sweetness? Yeah, and also the sourness of that fruit, I think you'll probably try to ah. use. It's kind of common using figs and pears for cooking foie gras. Well, that is a first here, cooking foie gras with peaches. And now a flip over in the walk, yes. I asked Challenger Corby to give me his concept for today, and he said it'll be a combination of Tour d'Argent classic dishes and my own original recipes, a dinner course for the coming century, back to you. Okay. Well, that's exciting. Mm. Tour d'Argent into the 21st wow. century. And of course, Tour d'Argent means Silver Tower in French, yes, right? Yes. Okay, and safe to say, one of the most famous restaurants in the world. Located near the Seine River. Yes. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay, you been there? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
I asked Challenger Corby to give me his concept for today, and he said it'll be a combination of Tour d'Argent classic dishes and my own original recipes, a dinner course for the coming century. Back to you. That's Ooh, exciting. La Tour wow. d'Argent into the 21st century. Mm. Yeah. And of course, that means Silver Tower in French, right? Yes, yes. And safe to say, one of the most famous restaurants in the world? Yeah, it's located near the Sun River. Really? Um, yep. You been there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think that's telling me I got to think about going freelance one day. Oh, you can't <laughs> say that on the air. Yes, I can. <laughs> okay, kids. Now, let's just uh, check out the challenger here. You see this gravy coming out? Yeah. The yeah. process is mm. called arrosé in French, or basting, basically, in English. Mm -hmm. And you have to make sure you hit the dry spots like this just over and over okay, again. Okay, and he did. And togan, togan. there. Yeah. Yeah. Some people say winter gourd. Gourd, oh. Chinese ham and foie gras. I like my gras. gourds, yeah. All sandwiched together, right? I think this will end up in a soup or something. A soup on the way. Oh. I, I think so. I'm still not really? sure, though. Mm. Okay. That's what I'm thinking, just eat looking it, at this. Eat it as is. Okay. <laughs> but you know, you have to let the gourd absorb some of the flavor, right? Oh, I so see. So I think what the, what's on this will actually be flipped over then. Okay. Uh, so he'll be matching everything together, basically. Mm. All right. Now, back with Corby. Oh, yeah. Well, finally, finally. This is what I wanted to see. Mm. Okay. Vein removal operation, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. This uh, process is called uh, dinave in French, which is removing the nerves and veins. Yeah. This ah. takes a bit of time, I hear. Yeah. And just it's really very intricate. Look at that. It's complicated. Yeah. yeah. If, they, if they don't do it properly, it's going to taste bitter. Well, where did you learn all this? I'm impressed. Oh, please. <laughs> From now on, you're Dr. Foie Gras. Oh, come on. This is second-hand information. <laughs> now, they're doing this to, for all of them? Right. And if you don't, as he said, they'll, they'll taste bitter. Okay. A rather mm -hmm. tedious task? Yeah. Chefs usually spend hours doing this. Like the uh, sushi chefs picking out the small bones. Yeah. Mm. Now, but before that, check out uh, the soup here. The Iron yeah, Chef. The Iron Chef. See yes, what okay. I tell you. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And the broth, somewhat uh, light looking there. Yeah. And he'll be steaming the whole thing together. Steaming it. Mm. And I guess that would allow the gourd to absorb all the flavors. Right. And okay. if I can take a stab at one more thing, after steaming, I think he'll flip the whole thing over into a bowl, like a dome. Ah. Okay. So that's why he's carefully putting it together. That's my prediction of the all day. All right. We'll make book on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look at the challenger again. He was pulling out the veins, right? Uh, what's next? Now, he poured some wine over it. Wine brandy, maybe? Is it wine? Ooh, my. I think hmm. it's called Pinot, a type of aperitif. All right, it's very sweet. sweet. Replay it there. Is it a wine, then? Hmm. Chris, on? Yes. Yeah, let me explain what the challenger has been doing. He poured cognac and sherry over the foie gras and then sprinkled it with salt and pepper. Sherry? And he explains hmm. that this usually takes two or three hours, but he says I had to take a shortcut today as to why I chose to do this. That is a secret. All right, uh, thanks, Ota. He's working very methodically, carefully, all the way from the beginning. Yeah. Yes, he sure is. Mm. Now, are you sure it's a sherry? Right. Yes, it's a type of sweet time. sherry, he says. Oh, okay. All right, 30 minutes gone, 30 to go. Challenger's entourage bringing the cheers for Corby, the 300th challenger we've had in Kitchen Stadium, head chef of the Tokyo branch, the only branch of La Tour d'Argent. What did he do now? And right now, Ota's up in the royal box with the Iron Chefs with Sakai. Go ahead and take it. Thank you, Sakai-san. Yes. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the yes. different ways each chef is using his foie gras. Uh, first, your observations yes. of the challenger. Well. Yeah, he sure is representing Tour d'Argent. The duck, yes. the one being stuffed with foie gras wrapped in grape leaves. Ah, uh, there's leaves. the foie gras right there. I'm so interested in seeing how he'll control the flames to cook the duck. You see, the temperature control will be the determining factor in the finish of the foie I gras. I see. Okay, and Chen San? Chen San, yes. He, as a Chinese chef, he's steaming it, which is an approach French cuisine chefs don't think of. Right. I think he's applying his Chinese techniques cleverly to tackle this ingredient. I look forward to both chefs' dishes. So, in your opinion, who do you think is doing better so far? <laughs> Chen San's working in a tough situation, I know that. But that steam dish, if that is appreciated by the tasters, I think he'll have a good chance to win. All right, thank yeah, you thank very you. much. Thank you. And back to you, Fukui San. All right, thanks, big fella. And Sakai feeling that the Iron Chef steamed foie gras dish will be key for him to have any chance of pulling this one out today. Mm. Okay, now if we can get a shot of the Challenger. All right. Uh, what's this for? Rice? No. no. What, what is this? That's melon. Go. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is a mixture of consisting of melon, ginger, consomme, and bell pepper spice, which has all been chilling in the refrigerator. How'd you know that? <laughs> I happen to oh, see him using uh, melon. <laughs> olive oil in there as well. Okay. Ah, is that right? With melon, Corby then making a dessert or something. A dessert or an appetizer, perhaps. All right, a bookend on either side of the meal. Right. And um, now, what's some pounding noise upstairs? Feet or hands from the challenger's entourage, <laughs> and he acknowledges them with the thumbs up sign. 
And for the folks who worked with him at La Tour d'Argent, and we see Chef Shimizu up there Scusa. again. Go. Yeah, Chef Shimizu has nothing but compliments for the challenger. Comments like he's doing everything very carefully and methodically. That's the heart of the Tour d'Argent approach. It's just wonderful, he says. All right, and now we can see Corby's moved on to another item. This here, maybe a, a tempura style. Deep fried, oh, wow. wow. tempura. <laughs> All right. I had this okay. with bread crumbs yeah. on it. It was yeah. so That's great. That's my favorite. That sounds good. Yeah, it's so good. It's almost creamy. Now, back to Chen's side. Man's got rice there, glutinous? I think so. Yes, okay. glutinous rice, uh-huh. Okay, the glutinous rice ready to go. Boy, oh boy, hard to imagine how this would go with foie gras. Now, still with the Iron Chef, they've got a deep fry job going. Okay. Yeah, deep frying a, a fritter as well. Cousin? Yes. Yeah, the batter that the Iron Chef is using for this deep fry dish is made of salt, pepper, cornstarch, and eggs, while the batter the Challenger is using is a mix of flour and salt only. Oh, okay. Chinese oh. fries. <laughs> <laughs> Challenger. What does he have underneath? Consomme jelly. Ah, yes, okay, consomme. All right, and with a piece of sauteed foie gras on top, and he just added something on top of the foie gras right now. Yeah. Fukuzan! Okay. Go! Yeah, the challenger just did a taste test of the foie gras on the uh, consomme jelly and said, mmm, this is so good. He looked like he was in heaven. <laughs> All right, and here come the ducks. Mm. Oh, at last, The foie yes. gras inside, yes. wrapped in grape leaves, and Sakai said this should be awesome. Oh. It looks fantastic right there. The Iron oh. Chef is also doing something interesting. All right, we'll try to get back over to his to side. 15 minutes left now, and in the royal box, the Iron Chefs rise to their feet. <laughs> well, Kandagawa, too, the glutinous trying rice. to cheer on the Iron Chef. He did? Oh, yeah. Okay, meantime, Chen making a move toward his Iron Chef brothers who applaud him from upstairs. Now, this is the item that he put in, right? Yeah, is that what yeah. You're saying? Okay, and okay. working that glutinous Squeeze rice, on. go. Yeah, the Iron Chef just added soy sauce and melted lard to his glutinous rice. Okay, soy and oh. lard it was, folks. Okay. Wow. And there it is on the replay, and Mmm, now something smells great. Mm. Oh, yeah, it does. Savory. Can't tell yeah. which side is coming the from. The challenger <laughs> side. <laughs> okay. Okay, he's taking out the stitches and un untying it. Oh, I'd really like to see inside. Yeah, yeah, me now, too. Now, as Sakai-san <laughs> pointed out, I'm interested to see how the foie gras inside turned out. All right, well, right. moments away from finding out here. Wow. Yeah. He's, he's checking inside Stabbing there. it. Mm. Skewer. That was it? Okay, just to poke in, and he, he says it's okay. <laughs> Seems to be finished, and quite a dynamic-looking dish. And this one, too, oh, by oh, Chen. Wow. Really looks wow. good. The gourd soup. Is it still a soup now? <laughs> it's finished. <laughs> it looks perfect, just nice and soft and ooh. Yeah, yeah. and that's right. Chinese ham, right? Mm. So that'll add just the right amount of saltiness to the mm -hmm. whole mix. And mm -hmm. a gourd togon and like a dome. Not the Tokyo dome, but a togon dome there. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Always playing with I words. I like that, I like that. Squeeze <laughs> Yes. Yeah, do you remember Challenger Corby chilling crushed foie gras? wrapped in foil? Yes. He elaborated on that dish saying this is for making a specialty dish, a royal dish for an emperor, a la Iron Chef style. This mm. recipe is 130 years old. Ooh, my. Okay, and he's calling it the Iron Chef version of yes, the dish. Yes, that's ah, right, uh-huh. A I rearranged see. version of a La Tour d'Argent specialty which was created 130 years ago. The wow. tasters will get that today. Yeah, in other words, a shortcut version or an idea that I he got it. from the Iron Chefs. Okay, okay, okay. right on, the 60-minute version. Uh, I guess I'll do more to it from now. Yes, and it looks very different from your usual everyday terrine. Yeah, yeah, yeah completely. Yeah, completely. It's not agree. a terrine yeah, at all. After all. I wonder what it'll taste like. Mm. How is it going to finish it, though? Go. Yeah, a follow-up note on the royal-style foie gras dish. He tells me that he didn't have enough time to perfect it, so it's rather soft, but the flavor is top-notch. It is a success. All right, Ooh. Corby, confident so, of the outcome. Sounds good. And I guess he'll do more to it from now? Yes, and it looks very different from your usual everyday terrain. Yeah, yeah, completely yeah. different. Completely. Yeah, it was mm. not a terrain after all. All right, mm. wonder what it'll taste like. Mm. And also, go. how will we finish it? I yeah. wonder. Uh, yes. A follow up note on the royal style foie gras dish. He tells me that he didn't have enough time to perfect it, so it's rather soft, but the flavor is top notch. It is a success. Mm, all right, Corby, confident good. of the sounds outcome. Good. Now, on top of the melon. On top of the melon. So it's with the fruit, as we thought, uh -huh, right? Uh huh. And it does look fabulous. Even Sakai's yep. taking notes. Now, check <laughs> what out is the this? Iron Chef here. Let's see ginger, scallions, and red chili. So hot and spicy, because I noticed him frying foie gras. Mm. 
Mm, yes, uh -huh. yes. Oh, this is so gonna be I good. So I think this is probably the sauce for that, a, a stir fry dish. Cousin. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, in his walk, the Iron Chef has the following: scallions, garlic, ginger, and red chili. Oh yes, oh, okay. here yes. it comes. Mm. Okay, I was right. For wow. Once. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't so sure before. I never am. <laughs> now back to Corby pouring some broth over this. Okay, now this has to contain Omar lobster and foie gras, I think. And tomatoes. And the color oh, quotient very high on that one. Cousin. Go ahead. Yeah, the sauce the challenger is spooning onto this dish is a simple blend of fresh basil and olive oil. Basil Back to and you. olive wow. oil, mm -hmm. excellent. Oh, that sounds wow. yes. really, really good. Awesome. Mm. So this is a flavor, though, not typically found in Japan. What? Mm. So, well, this is actually new to Japan. I've never had this huh? kind of flavor myself. Hmm. All right, mm. not even in spaghetti, huh? <laughs> All right, must be a La Tour d'Argent <laughs> recipe. Uh, it, I'm not even sure if it's that. So maybe a Corby creation, then? As far as I can tell, I think he's just making a lot of these dishes based just on his imagination, so. Really? All right, <laughs> then Challenger Corby creating on the fly today as we approach the five-minute mark. There's go. the call, five oh. minutes left. And the use of basil like this is very possible, though. All right, today's battle being fought by the 300th Challenger in Kitchen Stadium from Latour Darjan in Tokyo, Dominique Corby. Still in his early 30s, but skill level already high. He has taken on the Iron Chef Chinese Chen well, it Kenichi. looks like the Iron Chef's ready. Mm. Uh, I mean, on top of the glutinous rice. Iron Chef side the rice, and I can see scallions and... And the fried oh, frog. The fried wow. fried yeah. frog. Yeah. Ginger, scallions, Hot red chili. Spicy. Red looks chili. great. Foie gras <laughs> fried in a sauce of Yum. spice oh. going with the rice. Cuisine. Yes. Yeah, just to confirm, this dish is boiled glutinous rice with scallions, garlic, ginger, red chili, and fried foie gras on top. The sauce is sugar, vinegar, soy sauce, and cornstarch. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Ota. Oh, and he added baked apples as well. With apples. Mm. Yes. All right, and there they are, right oh, there. Okay. Right, uh-huh. Okay, wow. we are covered on that one up, till, up to the point. Mm. Now, does the challenger have peaches in his? Peaches. Corby, peaches. you're talking about? Oh, right, right, oh, okay. right. Yeah, peaches early. Oh, All right, right. Yep, peaches yep, yep. match with foie gras. If Corby's putting them together, peach slices mm -hmm. on top. Yeah. So this will add a refreshing touch then. Ooh, it's going to be good. I don't think he cooked it intentionally. Though. All right, yeah. swinging back to the Iron Chef side, there are his peaches, and they have been cooked. Oh, yeah. And then some. Thought at first it was a shot in the dark for Chen to pair up peaches with foie gras, but Corby having done so, Chen knew what he was up to. And now taking this one apart. Okay, now has this one been chilled? Yeah, that, that's what I think. Oh, right. Yeah, I can see the fat hardening around it. Now, wasn't this the steamed one? I'm telling you, some of these dishes have been hard to follow today. <laughs> yes. Yes, this dish that the Iron Chef is working on that you've been talking about is the one where he steamed sliced goose foie gras in the steamer, chilled it, and then garnished it with scallions, ginger, and salt-cured red chili. All right, thank mm. you. And it was steamed at first. Yes. So this would be a light dish. Then. Yeah, you're probably right. I, I think this is for the foie gras dish. All right, well, the Iron Chef said he was going to steam one of them to end up with a lighter flavor. And Iron Chef Sakai upstairs was intrigued by that, suggesting his chances could ride on how well it turned out. Mm. He's playing Cousin. that now, yes. Yeah, I mentioned to Challenger Corby that time is running out and asked him how he's doing, and he said, hey, do I look panicked? I'm not. In fact, I'm confident my dishes are going to be something to look forward to. Okay, <laughs> he doesn't come off sounding One arrogant at all, go. just matter-of-factly, and now a minute to go, the final 60 seconds, and Corby's supporters, the Latour d'Argent crowd, are wildly cheering now. Their man seems to have been in control control of this one the whole way from the get-go. A double whammy for the Iron Chef today, hamstrung by the choice of the theme ingredient, and then the man on the other side of the kitchen, a highly skilled French cuisine expert, giving Corby foie gras like giving paint to Picasso. As Corby gestures again to his entourage, relax, he's just about done. Steam in the foreground on Chen's side as he kicks it into high gear. The Iron Chef can feel rightfully so. He's been given the shaft today, dazed at the outset with foie gras. Nevertheless, Chen Kenichi's been game to try and do what he can with an ingredient not even used in Chinese cuisine. The odds look long. Challenge to Corby. Go. The gravy, the finishing touches there to his grape leaf wrapped foie gras in roasted duck. Go. Both mm, men taking wow. it right to the last second. What a battle we've had today with Five challenger seconds. number 300 in Kitchen Three, Stadium. Dominique two, Corby really one. putting the squeeze on the Iron Chef and that's it. The cooking's done. The foie gras battle is over. You appeared to be in control every step of the way. From the beginning, everything, everything turned out as planned. So you're completely confident? Totally confident. And since foie gras is definitely your forte, yes. you should have the edge. I'll win. You'll win? Yes. Well, uh, he was the 300th challenger, yeah. and on top of that, you had to deal with an ingredient you usually don't use. 
Foie gras? Well, the uh, 300th Challenger thing. That bothered you made more? Made me think how long I've been doing this. I see. Uh, it gave me a special feeling. I was motivated to do my best today. Fired up, huh? Uh, and your dishes? Dishes? Well, uh, I did my best. Uh, uh -huh. I'll leave it to the judges to decide. Yeah, okay. I did my best. Okay. What else can I say? Challenger Corby is offering five dishes. First, pan-fried foie gras with basil sauce. It's the natural flavor of simply boiled Omar lobster, which helps accentuate the noble flavor of foie gras. Foie gras and herbs saute in pumpkin soup. Consomme jelly and foie gras with pepper, marvelously fused by this genius. And the sweetness of the pumpkin soup adds more luster to the already shining reputation of the Silver Tower. Third, foie gras royale. He added fried lotus root to this dish, which encapsulates the natural flavor of foie gras in its soft and gentle texture. Fourth, roast duck stuffed with foie gras. Corby rearranged a Silver Tower specialty, creating his own version. The finish of the foie gras inside the duck is what everyone awaits. And his truffle-flavored sauce is simply extraordinary. Last, foie gras in fruit gazpacho, also based on a Latour d'Argent specialty. It's a Corby version of a dish fit for royalty. Iron Chef Chen also came up with five dishes. First, steamed foie gras appetizer. He incorporated a Chinese cooking technique by steaming the foie gras. He serves it with several sauces and garnishes, including sauteed macadamia nuts and red chili powder, which also add to the visual effect. Second, Chinese foie gras royale. The Iron Chef added Shantong soup to the broth-based egg custard and used shark fin soup to make it a genuine Chinese dish. The shark fin's texture makes this unique dish truly a delectable delight. Third, steamed foie gras and gourd. Sandwiched between the gourd slices are Chinese ham, which was sauteed in honey, and foie gras, with the gourd pieces fully absorbing the flavor of the foie gras. Fourth, grilled foie gras and peaches. Another unique one, demonstrating the Iron Chef's creativity, putting together foie gras pieces with the fruity aroma and savory blocks of foie gras. It all goes down with a well-prepared sweet sauce. Last, sweet and sour foie gras, glutinous rice, finished like a risotto, cleverly neutralizing the impact of foie gras, making this a pleasant dish to end with. He's the head chef of the Tokyo branch, the only branch of the world-famous restaurant in Paris, La Tour d'Argent. Today's challenger, number 300 in Kitchen Stadium, Dominique Corby. From a restaurant with a 400-year tradition, Corby chooses to battle the longest-serving iron chef, Chen Kenichi. Chairman Kaga unveils the theme, advantage for the challenger from the Silver Tower, handing him foie gras on a silver platter. And a tour de force performance by challenger Corby in his five dishes. Iron Chef Chen, under pressure big time, comes through finishing five of his own. And now, the moment of truth, tasting and judgment. On the panel today are photographer Tenmei Kano, actress Yuko Asano, newscaster Norio Fukutome, and fortune teller Kazuko Hosoki. First, the dishes of Challenger Corby. I put boiled Omar lobster in for texture. It should match very well with foie gras. Mm. The texture is very nice. And I was wondering how olive oil would work with foie gras, but the basil does it. It adds a refreshing touch. And the sauce matches well with the bread. It's so nice. The Omar lobster tastes very simple, yet when having it together with the thick foie gras, I mean, the taste combination is just great. In Japanese cooking, this would be like chawanmushi. Mm. This is awesome. After the first spoonful, the foie gras spread in my mouth, and then the sauce yeah. chases it. Yeah. And after trying the fried foie gras once and going back to this, it tasted completely different. It was like two completely different dishes. Technique-wise, this is not so complicated, but this man knows everything about foie gras, I think. He has shown his expertise in handling foie gras. Mm. And now, what they're all waiting for, the roast duck stuffed with foie gras. And I'll use a spoon to get it out. Roast duck. Ooh. Oh, you scared me. Mm. Mm. Hosoki-san? It's delicious. <laughs> I told you so. Mm. 
I thought this was going to be a wild tasting dish. But it's gentle. Yeah. This is so soft, almost melting. It's quite sweet. This is yeah. good, isn't it? I know I can't fill myself up knowing that I have to eat more later, but... Um, but you can't stop. Yeah, hard to stop. <laughs> How do I describe this? The sweetness of the melon and the peach is there, and beneath that, it's like there's a unsweetened chocolate. Don't you think so? Yeah. Yes, white right. chocolate. Like white chocolate. Hmm. This is very good. He cleverly maintained the raw texture of foie gras, and that to me felt a bit funny at first, but after chewing it for a while, the nice flavor of foie gras came out. I see the same strategy in the dessert too. He's used the same foie gras in so many different ways, and he satisfied us completely. Now, I can't think of anyone else who could do this, and that's what impressed me the most. I'm totally moved. And now up the dishes of Iron Chef Chen. The Chinese foie gras royale will be finished by the Iron Chef. He'll pour shark fin soup over it, and we shall see how it goes down. What am I gonna do? I don't know what to do. It's a totally different approach from the Challenger's Royale, but this is awesome too. The flavor has so much depth. I'm impressed. Thanks. Really, it's almost as if you used the soft roe of a blowfish in this. The truffles add something extra to this dish. I just realized it right now. Thank you very much. Chen San, if yes. 10,000 people ate this, 10,000 would like it. Really? Thanks. This soup is that good. It's top It's notch. really good. And now to the steamed dish using gourd that'll be served here. Actually, I, I needed a bit more time uh, to do this, to be honest. I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> oh, yes. The gourd has absorbed all kind of flavors. And I think the timing's perfect to enjoy it. He didn't flavor the foie gras, but allowed the other ingredients to flavor this dish. This is wonderful. Ham, foie gras, and gourd. You can eat two together or three together. I'm enjoying all kinds of different uh, combinations. I've never had a gourd uh, dish like this. This is so good. I like it. This kind of sweetness is so articulate. This is such a luxurious foie gras steak. That's for young people. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chen San seemed to be panicking when he was cooking this. The outside is a bit charred, but nicely done, though. And with the blackened surface eaten together, you understand why he did that. He did it for the sweetness and the texture. So clever. Now the foie gras. He did a lovely job of fusing it into Chinese cuisine. Hmm, yet he added his own originality. I liked every dish, really. They were so different. The challenger from a different level of skill versus Chin San with his power to pull us into his own world. The contrast between the two was just so interesting to see. This is a tough problem. It's tough. Very tough. Dour look by the Iron Chef, but what a showing. This is no gimme for Corby. Today, one of the best battles we've ever had, our 300th challenger, a young genius from Latour d'Argent, Challenger Corby, predicting victory. And with foie gras, the theme, and battling the Iron Chef Chinese, everything lined up his way. But never count out an Iron Chef. Chan's up off the floor. The judges are tied. Total points will decide who takes it, whose cuisine reigns supreme. Liu
It's a tie. We're going to overtime. Incredible. Chen managing to force OT against Colby, who couldn't win in regulation with Boagra. Kano and Asano for the Iron Chef, Fukutomi and Hosoki for the challenger. Total points tied at 78. We have overtime. The flames of this rivalry will continue to burn for an additional 30 minutes. 